Hey, everybody, and uh, thanks for joining us for another uh, webinar on our PMK. Uh, this is Chris Gill, the founder CEO of Meridian. Um, I've got our director of software, Paul Burden, as a panelist, and Melissa, who is running the, uh, the show for us here, uh, is also on, who is one of our marketing coordinators here at Meridian. Hope everyone is doing okay, or as well as can be expected in these uh, tough times that we're all in. So we will jump right into this. Hopefully we can get through this uh, in less than an hour. I know people have got a lot to do, so we'll try and get through this as quickly as we can and get to the questions as quickly as we can. Um, all right, Melissa, you want to go to the next slide? <clears throat> so a little bit about Meridian. Some of you guys may or may not know who we are, what we do. We've been doing self-service for over 20 years now, um, partnered with a lot of the uh, big companies out there have for many years, uh, fully integrated. Uh, we have our software development team led by Paul based out of Mississauga, Canada. Um, we have our production facilities headquartered in um, Aberdeen, North Carolina, about an hour south of Raleigh, uh, where we have all our design engineering team. Um, we have some of our conceptual designers in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, so we do everything under one roof, although that may be obviously extended into uh, Charlotte and Mississauga. Uh, all the design engineering concept engineering is all done here, full metal fabrication facility here, powder coat, everything is done in Aberdeen. Um, we can do UL self-certify here, which we do for a lot of clients. Uh, we are ISO 9001-2015 certified, and obviously we've done a lot with ADA and other compliance groups uh, for different deployments. And then, as I mentioned, our full software development capability uh, from our office in Mississauga, Canada. Um, next slide. So jumping right into this uh, device, um, which we're building as fast as we can and deploying as fast as we can, um, our PMK, as we're calling it, personal management kiosk. So this, this unit has been designed to do two really core things. One, check the temperature of um, someone coming to the facility, whether that's a staff member, whether that's an employee, whether that's a vendor, a visitor, um, different modes that we'll go into that this can be set for, for those different scenarios. Um, facial identification, uh, you can register an employee at the device, only takes a few seconds. And then obviously that data will be captured every time they come to the unit to get a temp check and uh, a facial recognition uh, check. Um, it does have uh, obviously temperature threshold alarms that you can set. I think standard it comes at 99.3. Uh, we have an anodized aluminum finish on the pole that you see there. That's a half round. So if you want to have the flat side facing forward, uh, you can, or the curved side that you see there. We do have countertop now as well, um, but everything currently shipping is on the pedestal unit that you see in the image there. Uh, next slide. So there's a pedestal. We do have graphic availability on the right. What we're going to do is provide downloads for people. If they want to put a graphic, we'll provide you with a template, and we suggest just using a, a local graphic group um, the volume is such, and uh, we're, we've been waiting on client files, so we've decided not to do graphics on these initial shipments as we've got thousands of these going out. Um, so we can assist you with getting signage done, um, whether that's internally from our signage group and sending it out or from signage companies that we work with around the country that will be happy to provide you with signage for the unit. Uh, next slide. Countertop, as we mentioned, same thing. We won't be doing the graphics because it is slowing the process down um, of getting these things out and in people's hands. Um, that's the new countertop design, which we also have a, a battery, lithium battery being developed right now, waiting on the certification to come back in for that, which will power the freestanding or the countertop unit um, for about 12 to 16 hours. Next slide. So this is where most of the questions come up, and obviously we'll have a Q&A session at the, uh, at the end of the slide deck here, so we'll get to that fairly rapidly. Um, it is a board level solution, so it's not a tablet. Um, we developed a board with our partner. It's done a lot of board development 
for us in the past for our key drop solutions, uh, our intelligent locker solutions, a lot of different solutions that we've done over the years. Uh, we partnered with to build an Android board initially. Uh, we are working on a Windows version of this as well. Uh, but the Android board has got the uh, um, all of the IOs for um, a lot of different connectivity. Obviously, the LAN and Wi-Fi is built into the device. We can put a contactless reader in there. Um, obviously, we have the thermal device, which is a German device, taking the temperature in a separate enclosure at the top. And then the camera technology and IR technology built into the camera. So the camera will actually, in fact, do facial recognition Obviously, normal light, it'll also do it in a darkened space. If for some reason this was being deployed in the dark, it will still do what it's intended to do with no problems. Um, we do have FCC and C certification. We can get you uh, information on that as needed. Um, the advertised uh, variance is 0.5C, 0.9F. We're seeing much more accurate than that, but that's what we've posted. And uh, we do calibrate these before they go. We do have calibration devices if someone wanted one, so you could do periodic calibration uh, on site. Uh, some clients that are deploying lots of these have decided to get one of those, um, but it's certainly not needed. Um, you can recognize up to 30,000 faces in the database. That is a local database. There is opportunity to expand on that, and then we'll get in a little more into that as we go into our server backend piece. And uh, it does voice prompt so obviously if it's a stranger if it's over temperature an alert will sound um, if you've got the mask mode on and want someone to wear a mask a voice prompt will tell them to put the mask on and uh, obviously you check into the device that way next slide So here's some of the settings that we have. There's a lot of different screens in the administration side. Um, this is the administration side. Uh, to get to this, you'll use uh, the middle uh, mouse button or scroll button uh, on the provided mouse um, to get to this screen. Um, I think it's the right mouse button to get to the Android screen, uh, but obviously this is locked down when the application is running. Um, this is the body temperature uh, area. So you can turn it off if you don't want it. Obviously, most people will want this. The whole reason for this device is so it will take that temperature of the person coming into the facility. Uh, you can do the variance here. So if it's in a warmer facility, colder facility, and you're seeing a slight variance in your calibration, uh, you can adjust that there. Um, that's been quite useful for some deployments. Mass detection, as I mentioned earlier, you can toggle on or off. And stranger mode, we have our units in our showroom where we have a lot of our vendors that are still obviously working with us as we are a critical organization. We are still running, um, actually or adding people, adding space, obviously being um, very, very careful as we do so. We do require masks to be worn at all times um, unless you have your own secluded office. Um, and when you leave the office, the mask must be put on. Uh, we have these devices all around our facility and in stranger mode, it will allow anyone to basically get a temperature check. So that's how we have our units up front. The units in the back in the manufacturing facility obviously do facial recognition to our employees only. Um, so that's where you can toggle those features. Next slide. Okay, um, more of the back end here. So this is the uh, obviously the some of the uh, information that we have on our employees or approved visitors that entered into this very quickly. Um, you can delete fields here. Uh, you can upload new information. Um, you can also set an expiry date. So if we have, for instance, we had um, someone here service in one of our large um, metal fabrication. Uh, piece of equipment here. They were here for three days, so we set them up in the system and it basically timed out in three days. Obviously, if you need them there for longer, you can change that, um, but it does capture the picture of the person and uh, gets their name if it's in there, gets their employee ID if that's in there, and uh, the type, obviously, if they're a visitor, staff, employee, vendor, etc. Okay, next slide.
Okay, so this is what most of the questions are coming up about. So M0 Manage, we've had uh, since the acquisition of King Products and Solutions in 2009. Uh, this is where Paul and his team joined Meridian. Um, the acquisition was really done for the software that they had created. Uh, we'd actually bumped up against them several times in, in several large kiosk deployments and lost out to them because they had the whole solution, i.e. the software and the hardware. Um, so Paul and his team are developing um, the tools for these units to tie into our M0 Manage, which has typically been Windows deployments, uh, large Windows deployments, small Windows deployments. This is used for state of health reporting, a lot of things obviously you see listed here, um, patch updates to the unit, um, and obviously the data that comes from that. We have a lot of clients uh, using this for billing purposes, state of health of the unit, sending out alerts, uh, if a unit goes down, if a unit is out of paper, or in this case, if the unit has lost internet connectivity, been unplugged, etc. Um, it can also be used in this case, once we release this, for sending out alerts. If you've got someone that shouldn't be there, that's a stranger, you can get an alert, send an email, send an SMS text. If you have someone that's over the desired temperature, it can do the same thing. So if you wanted to turn the alarms off on the unit and just have that come to the kind of the control panel in M0 Manage, you could do that. So this will allow you to also manage, obviously, a large network of these. Uh, we've got some clients deploying up to 10,000 of these units, so obviously having all that available to them remotely is critical, and you'll be able to do that from this system. We're actually developing a skimmed down version of this. There's a lot of tools in M0 Manage that you don't need for this particular device. Um, so we are skimming that down, the cost will be less, um, it is an annual subscription, which I'm sure we'll get into in some of the questions. Uh, next slide, Melissa. So some of the specifications, and we can, this information is on our site, so you should be able to get to all this very easily. I'm not going to go through each line here. Uh, if there's any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, towards the end of the presentation. Happy to answer as many as we can. I think we got through all of them last time. Um, eight inch screen, it is a separate screen. It's not a tablet. Um, so if necessary, if you know someone hit this with a hammer, broke the screen, this, the actual monitor could be replaced, um, not the whole device. Um, so go to the next one. This one is not touch. Um, that may be something that we do in the future. So um, we again, all of the specifications are available on the website on the link. So jumping right into the questions, Melissa, do you want to start with uh, knocking out some of those questions and Paul and I'll see if we can answer them for you? Yeah. Um, so the first question is, will the slides be available to download after the webinar? And yes, they will be. Yeah, I think um, we have video, we're posting videos right of the whole thing as well. Yes, the entire thing is being recorded and a follow-up email will go out um, with the link to the YouTube video to rewatch the entire webinar. Okay. The next question is, how is the tablet attached to the kiosk? Is it secured to ensure that it can't walk away? It is, yeah. So the uh, screen, the board is in a, in a aluminum enclosure, which is then bolted to the stand, um, so it cannot be removed. Uh, without obviously someone having a lot of tools with them and uh, you know a lot of desire to do that so it, it is secure next question is are these hipaa compliant uh well that's that's a great question so we're actually working with our legal team um but hipaa hipaa um compliance will vary from deployment to deployment so we had a long call last week and another one this week uh, specific to some deployments that we're doing with the client, so there's some things that we're tweaking for them. Um, but the HIPAA compliance will be up to the individual uh, and their specific deployment. So uh, we do a lot in healthcare, uh, work with some of the big guys in healthcare. We've got thousands of units at hospitals with obviously privacy filters, privacy wings. Um, obviously on the software side, there's a lot of considerations there of what information is being gathered what information is not visible uh, to certain aspects of, uh, you know, like an IT team or someone that's monitoring the back end of these systems. So that would be really an individual um, responsible for ensuring that this device 
meets their requirements. And again, happy to have separate conversations about that. The next question is, if someone shows red stating that they have an elevated temperature, is the system capable of sending a text or email notifying a supervisor or plant nurse that we have an elevated temperature message? So I'll, I'll take this one, Paul, obviously speaking for your team here, but right now as a standalone unit, no. So it will do an audible alarm, which is quite loud. Obviously you can turn the volume down and obviously it will flash red. Um, so as our employees are coming into the facility, uh, we've got a lot of utilities using this. Uh, as their employees are coming in, there is a supervisor there, obviously not having to individually scan everyone's forehead now by hand. Um, but if an alarm goes off, and we have had that happen a couple of times in the probably last month or so, um, they're instructed to go to a, a area where they'll get further evaluation. Then we choose whether they'll go home for the day or whether we have to send them to the clinic for testing. The next once, question yeah, yeah, once we get into the uh, M0 manage side, then that will be all possible. So SMS alerts, emails will all be possible as soon as someone uh, is over the temperature, they would get that message or alert. Next question is, do you have plans to include remote alerts or relay activation upon high temperature detection? Kind of just answered that one. Yeah, we do. Yeah, there is a relay built into it so that you'd be able to use a relay uh, to open a door or provide access to something or send a notification through uh, a relay uh, wire. Yeah, so they they even work, Paul, too, in the current standalone mode, those relays are activated. So if right. you need the, the face to be recognized and the temperature be within your range before it would open that door, then obviously someone that's over temperature, it will not trigger that relay to open that door. So that's already in place with it as they're shipping today. Next question is, is there an open API to build integrations? I'll, t I'll give you this one, Paul. Yeah, very shortly we will have M0 Manage available and there will be uh, a centralized API which you can integrate software and uh, more documentation on that and information about the release will be available when that's uh, ready. So, yes. Yeah, so we've done a lot of that for a lot of different clients. Obviously, we're doing it specifically for this unit. We're being asked to integrate into a lot of time and attendance systems, security systems, payroll systems, etc. Um, so the goal is to build out API. So obviously, multiple people can can do the integration. Uh, we're also available to do the integration, probably not for the next couple of months, which is why we're building out these APIs. Um, but we have a lot of clients that have done similar integrations with our M0 Manage into many different backend systems. Next question is, is the face database optional and can it be turned off? <clears throat> yeah, so um, Paul, is that currently as a standalone unit, I know you can have this in, I guess, stranger mode only, which is what we're using up front for vendors and things like that, is that it still captures information though, doesn't it? It does. Uh, uh, anonymously, uh, you would uh, have an access picture and a reading in the history, but you wouldn't know who it was. Uh, also, uh, you would be able to view that information through uh, through the uh, admin screen. You can also choose to delete the information uh, as at will. So if uh, you decide at the end of the day to delete all that, you can. Okay. Next question is, do you have to load the picture of the person through the kiosk camera or can you import an image? Currently, um, yes, so you, there is an import feature in the device, um, but we're capturing and have the best success capturing at the devices. Um, it's a very quick process. Um, I think it was eight, 10 seconds per person, depending on obviously how fast the person put in the information and can type because you put the name employee ID, and then there's a couple of other selections if it's a staff member, vendor, et cetera. Um, and uh, so depending how quick someone can type, but Paul, I think we are in the M0 Manage, we'll have the ability to do all that remotely and then also import a lot of that information. Is that correct? That's definitely correct, yes. Okay. The next question is, how does the calibration process occur? 
So in order to do true calibration, this is really the same for any device. So we've actually found this to be more accurate than some of the head thermometers that we've used in the past. And even some of the temperature um, guns that we have, very expensive temperature guns for our powder coat line. Um, but there's a calibration feature, but you do need the device. Uh, people may have them, they are available. Um, it is for calibrating um, machines such as this. So it is a set defined temperature that you will put in front of the device. And then you basically will adjust on the screen you saw earlier, you would adjust that back or forward, depending on what the screen is reading. Again, our experience has been, we've been getting better results than we post, um, but we're kind of putting that as a worst case scenario. If, if someone didn't calibrate, never calibrated, um, you know, environment uh, discrepancies, et cetera. But that's how you calibrate with the device and the unit and then set those parameters accordingly. Next question is, does it integrate with any other systems like receptionist sign-in tools? Yeah, so we just touched on the SDK or the sorry the the APIs will will enable it to tie into just about anything. Um, we are being asked by some of the larger uh, payroll companies right now to do some integration. Uh, we've just told them that that's not possible at the moment, but we will have APIs for them to look at, and they could possibly do that integration themselves. Um, that is a service that we have offered in the past, but um, the the demand of this is just far exceeded. Uh, anything we could imagine. So our team is just rapidly working on these APIs. So all of these different companies will have access to that to tie it into really hundreds of different uh, software systems that are out there. Next question is, is the management FAAS? Sorry, is the management what? Software is a service. Yeah, it is a subscription. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, an on-premises option available uh it that would be uh, a one-time uh, perpetual purchase so uh there's that option as well if you must have uh c content on site uh that's that's certainly possible and we will uh have more information about that when it becomes available yeah so right now and i think again this is yet to be set and we have some clients that are deploying very very large numbers and want manage um, but quantity one um, the hosted version or the software as a service version is $2.95 per year per device. Obviously, the more devices you get, that comes um, down significantly. So we have a client that's putting up with 10,000 of these out. Obviously, their, their cost is, is minimal uh, compared to the quantity one cost. The next question is, what are the practical applications for facial recognition? Is there a system to integrate with in order to take advantage of it? Uh, there will be. It kind of goes back to our APIs and tying this into other systems that could use that data. So we intend to, to replace all of our time clocks with this system. Um, I, I know we just actually switched uh, companies for uh, payroll time and attendance, and I know that's one of the companies we're working with, with one of our larger clients. So once those integrations have been done, we'll be using this for not just the uh, Obviously, the temperature check, which is really what we're using it for now, but time and attendance as well. Next question is, can enrollment from one device be pushed to another device, or does the person being enrolled need to be enrolled into each unit individually? So, Paul, we can we enrolled everyone on one unit, and then can't you export and import that to another unit, or or did we actually do each one individually? Yeah, start? there's a, a compact flashcard option in the latest version, so you can do an export by a uh, compact flashcard. You need an adapter for compact flash to USB, and you'll be able to walk to the other device and do an import. Uh, more, okay. we'll have to document that process right now. But yeah, that's that's, that's fairly yeah. new. So I know that was yeah. just added because we we re-registered everyone on all the devices, um, but now we can do that. And then obviously once we have the M0 managed, that will all be much much easier, much faster. Yeah. Next question is: How do you maintain confidentiality of the information? How is the data stored and protected? Well, on the the unit currently it's local, so obviously you have to have the admin um, password to get into the unit at all. And then, Paul, can you talk to on the server of what we do typically with encryption things on our server with data? Yeah, so it would be uh, transmitted securely and uh, the data at rest, the personally identifiable information will be encrypted. 
So uh, it'll be accessible only to authorized uh, viewers of that data within your segmented uh, account. So uh, we're keeping this in mind and encrypting all personally identifiable information at all points in transit and at rest. Next question is, what is the camera you are using and can you state the, dif the distance from the person to the screen? Was that what is the camera we're using? Mm -hmm. And then what's the distance you need to stand from the screen? It'll, so the device we've built in, um, so it, it detects not only the person, obviously how close they are to the unit. Um, the thermal sensing part of this, the infrared thermal sensor is, is a part of ours out of Germany. So that's a German sensor. Um, and then the camera is one that we co-developed um, for this device specifically. I think it's a two lens camera pole with IR um, yeah. built in. So this works in both dark and lit conditions. Yeah, but and that was a, all proprietary to this, uh, to this build. And the sensor is a, a thermal file array, they call it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Next question is, what is the current turnaround time on orders? Uh, right now it's, well, it was two to three weeks. We had to push that out a little bit just because the, the demand has, um, has kind of exceeded some of our suppliers, um, more specifically on the packaging side. Um, so it's three to four weeks currently. We are trying to bring that in. Um, we've added significant resources. We are trying to get to where we will be at about a thousand units a day capability, um, which we're seeing that kind of trending towards uh, in the next month or so, um, with the amount of inquiries, sample orders that have gone out, people that have received the sample orders that are now putting much larger orders are asking when can they get more units. And uh, so we're scaling up as quick as we can, but honestly, the, the demand uh, far exceeded what we thought it was going to be. So um, right now, three to four weeks is turnaround time. Next question is, when will your scaled down version of N0 Manage be available? Uh, the goal is next month. So Paul, I don't know if you want to talk to that of when next month, but uh, obviously as soon as we can, we do have it working in the lab. Paul and his team have been doing a lot of testing. I've been seeing a lot of reports from that looks, looks great. Um, but when do you think we'll be able to release this, Paul, fully vetted, Q8, et cetera? Uh, probably within the next two to three weeks. So we're hoping okay. two weeks. So it's certainly before the end of the month, and uh, and then these devices are ready to go. Um, even as a standalone unit, it can be tied in very easily. Um, all the pieces are already in the application to do that. Um, so some simple setup, and you would have these uh, remotely managed very quickly. The next question is, uh, what is the price? Uh, the retail price is thirty-two hundred, I believe, MSR. P is 3200 quantity one software packaging stand the freestanding stand obviously the heavy unit um, most of our resellers out there we've got a lot of different resellers many of which may be on the call or you may be clients of them um, have got street prices less than that um, I was on a call earlier today it was a, obviously the, the customers buy significant volume but it was it was a uh, quite a competitive price um, so, but MSRP quantity one is 3,200. I would say the street price is probably around the 2,800, 2,895 price. Um, in volume, again, um, they seem to be selling uh, quite a bit lower. Next question is, who is the manufacturer of the camera and what is the camera resolution? Paul, you know what the resolution is? Um, it is not, it, so it's manufactured, a company we've used quite a bit, it is not on the blacklist um, of cameras, and uh, I don't recall, but we can certainly get you that information. Uh, we'd rather do that on a on a one-on-one -on -one basis, because um, there are lots of people obviously trying to duplicate what we're doing, so, um, and it took quite a lot of uh, time and R&D to get the right combination together, a lot of stuff out there that's not working well. Um, so it's it is a Chinese camera. It is not one on the blacklist. I know that obviously applies to surveillance cameras, but still, it's not by any of those manufacturers. Paul, do you know the resolution of the camera by chance? Yeah, it's got a 32 by 32 array. Okay. So, is that the camera or the, th or the thermal? That's the thermal. Yeah, that's the thermal. 
then we'll say, okay. Yeah. All right. The next question is, is the unit weatherproof? No. So it's not been designed to go outdoors. We do have several clients using them covered outdoors. Um, it, again, not designed to be permanently outdoors. We are looking at an outdoor version of this. Obviously, we do a lot of outdoor kiosks. Uh, we've got thousands of outdoor solutions out there from drive-through solutions, large digital signage solutions. Um, this was not designed to go outdoors, um, but we will have an outdoor version at some point, but it's not a high bright screen. It doesn't have um, the other features that we would typically do in an outdoor kiosk, um, but outdoor undercover is fine. Um, there is a fan in the thermal uh, sensor array and uh, enclosure. And as long as it's covered, because also sunlight will play with facial recognition. So if you're getting serious shadows across the face, it will it will uh, distort the facial recognition accuracy. And uh, so it does need to be undercover so the light is consistent and you're not getting sunlight directly on the unit. The next question is, what are the reporting capabilities and is the data password protected? Yeah, data's pass even on the standalone device, the data's password protected. So you set your own password on the device. You need that obviously to get in to view anything. Um, so you have to get in there uh, with a password. And then on the server, I mean, there's even more um, security features on the server side of things once we have that uh, ready to go. But yes, it's all secured by password. The next question is, will the device be FDA 510 approved in the future? Possibly. We are talking uh, to them right now. It is not a medical device. It's not been designed to replace or be a medical device. We have done FDA certifications in the past. We've done quite a few medical grade solutions or medical solutions used um, for taking blood pressure, weight, pulse ox. Um, a lot of those that we went through FDA on, so we've done it quite a few times for clients. Um, this one, we're not sure. There's a couple of clients that require it, so that's why we're looking at it. Um, but it's certainly not designed to replace any uh, medical check. In fact, it's, you know, we designed it to be a quick um, way of measuring people's temperature, doing the facial recognition, tying it into all these other systems. Um, but anytime we have someone that's over temp, uh, we send them for a secondary check and then obviously have them either go home or go to the clinic. The next question is, how, do you, how soon do you expect integration with a platform to alert out to an administrator, for example, via email? So by the end of the month, I mean, that all, that all links to, that's all has been functioning for many, many years in our manage uh, software. So that's what we're essentially tying into. So at the end of the month, once manage is available, all that will, will be uh, ready to go. As far as building that into the device as a standalone device, I'm not sure, Paul, what the roadmap is there. I don't think we've really considered that. It is something obviously we could consider to have some additional features because uh, you can connect these obviously to your network. You can connect these to the internet. Uh, that may be something that we do consider in the future. The next question is, does the floor kiosk adjust for height? Will they adjust for someone in a wheelchair? Well, that's so interesting question. We, we had uh, the original height was about 56 inches. We reduced that to 50 um, or right around there specifically for that reason. So it seemed like it was much better at that height for scanning someone in a wheelchair all the way up to someone we have in our uh, group here at 6'5". Uh, if you're tall than that, you just have to stand a little bit further back. As long as you're in that cone or the zone, uh, it will get an accurate temperature and facial recognition. And the, the head does tilt, so it can be tilted up and down. Obviously, touching it is something we, we want to avoid, uh, but that is something that's possible. So, yes, the current stand we find um, does 99.9% .9 of people just fine. Uh, we don't have an adjustable stand. Is that something we could make? Absolutely. Uh, but for this release, it's the uh, the freestanding pedestal only. The next question is, can this unit work as a standalone device and not connect to a network? Yes, it can. The next question is, what is the tablet? Is it an Apple tablet? No, it's all Android based. It's not. It's actually a separate board that we developed in a screen. Um, 
and we did a few extra ports on the board for future expandability uh, that we may or may not tap into. But we have uh, extra video ports on there in case we want to add secondary signage. Um, just some kind of future proofing that we built in, um, but it's Android and it's a board and separate screen. The next question is, how do you access the data from the scans? Uh, just by logging in with the administration password right now to the device. So the device is stored on a log on the unit. We had a photo up a little earlier of that. Uh, and then that can be exported um, to an Excel sheet um, through the USB. The next question is, have you tested temperature ac accuracy over temperature range and humidity? Uh, we have. So we've tested it both outdoors and indoors, and we actually have clients using it both outdoors and indoors. Um, we have them in hospitals already that obviously doing secondary checks if they have anyone that's triggering the alarm. And uh, we've been very, very pleased with the results. Uh, our team here, we seem like we have some people that stay within a very close range of temperatures that seem like they vary a little more. Um, but we've, we've double checked that obviously with other temperature devices. But we're tied in very closely. We have a small advisory committee uh, for this product, which is comprised of doctors and the CEO of one of our local hospitals here. And uh, we took a lot of guidance in the initial development uh, of this. And they've been testing that for quite a while now. In fact, we have some references, um, if needed, um, from some of those locations. The next question is, can the kiosk be used to send a signal to a turnstile to deny someone access? Yep. Yeah, so the relays, it's got the Wigand, is it Wigand, Paul, did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. Um, it's got the, uh, and then relays that can do that. So we've been tr triggering different devices. We have this with some of the larger um, entry and exit people that, that create the turnstiles, the gates. Uh, the door locks, et cetera. So it, even without network integration, it's ready to do that. The next question is, can the temperature be hidden when an associate gets scanned? Uh, not currently, but that's something, Paul, I think we have on the roadmap to toggle on or off, isn't it? Yeah, I, I added that specific uh, request uh, a few weeks ago uh, because we've had it before. Okay. So it's on the roadmap, yeah. Yeah. The next question is, does this connect to other access software? We use Stanley Security for our badges and building access. Yeah, so again, and I know a lot of the questions about integration, and we obviously that's number one on our list. Uh, it will in the future, we'll have APIs for, for uh, Stanley and other systems to tie into, or obviously we can do those integrations as well, and we'd love to start kind of getting it integrated into as many of those systems as possible. Because uh, we'd also like to be putting that on, you know, our collateral and our marketing materials and informational materials of what systems are already kind of, you know, um, compatible with this device. So all in the works. And again, hopefully at the end of the month, we'll have those APIs available. And if companies like that have people available to do the integration, fantastic. If not, obviously we can do that at some point. The next question is, do the kiosks need to be connected via Wi-Fi or LAN? Uh, you have the ability to do either or. They don't, obviously in standalone mode, um, they don't need to be connected at all. Um, when we go with the Manage, uh, M0 Manage, we will need them connected through um, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Obviously, we would recommend that you didn't connect these through public Wi-Fi for many different reasons. Um, but your own secure Wi-Fi, your own secure network, they're ready to go on. Um, so you don't need to right now, um, but with M0 Manage, it will be required for them to be connected. The next question is, is the data encrypted in transit and at rest? Uh, Paul, I think you went into that a little bit, but... Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, it will be encrypted in transit and at rest when uh, employed with the M0 Manage. The next question is, when will a battery solution be available? Can you add the battery at a later time? Uh, the good news is, yes, you can. Um, we're st we're, so we have our battery solution identified. Um, we are working with a U.S. manufacturer on that. We are working through UL certification on that right now. 
uh, but that will be a drop-in solution to any of those uh, the current devices. The next question is, what kind of support comes with the purchase? Uh, we have, so we have our standard, the warranty is one year return to depot. We have our standard support service, which is a nine to five um, Meridian support. We're working with a lot of our resellers and partners to do really custom level SLA service level agreements. Anything from a four hour response, kind of rip and replace. If there's a problem, we just replace the head unit um, and it goes back to the parts pool. Um, so they're typically done on an individual basis, depending on what the client needs. If someone's buying one, obviously they don't need a parts pool. If someone's buying 10,000, they may want a parts pool and a next day or four hour response service. So they're written on an individual basis. The next question is, how can you disinfect the screen? Can you spray disinfect it directly on the tablet and allow it to dwell for some time? You can. So the night, this obviously doesn't have touch. So that's a, sometimes is a problem with touch screens. Uh, we actually have antimicrobial films um, that could uh, go on this device just to protect the, the, the screen a little more. But there is no touch. So you can really spray this down with any typical cleaning uh, agent and have no problem. Um, or we do have optional antimicrobial uh, films that could cover it that obviously they don't kill a virus of the germ, but they, they obviously over time do and don't allow the growth of any uh, bacteria. The next question is if the alarm can be disabled to protect the privacy of the individual. Yeah, it can. The next question is, will it print a pass fail sticker that staff can wear in the facility? Uh, not currently, no. Once we tie into some of the different systems that have been mentioned today in questions, it will be able to do that um, through that uh, separate software system. Currently, it doesn't. It could be something that we add on the roadmap. We have been asked now, I think that's two or three times we've been asked that question. So we may, we may consider that for future releases where we have that kind of built into the uh, native application. The next question is, are updates included? Are there any ongoing fees or subscriptions required? No, so for the standalone unit, there's not. And you would be able to download new APKs from our site as we get them available. Um, obviously, the M0 Manage is a subscription, um, as we've talked about earlier. So with that, yes. Um, but as the standalone unit, no. Uh, the next question is, how many are in the field currently in the U.S. doing facial temperatures? Oh, gosh. Uh, around 600, depends how many have arrived this week, around 600 to 1,000. Um, the orders, uh, and the nice thing is it's these are all um, the initial um, kind of deployments going out. We have limited it to smaller quantities, at least for the first few weeks, uh, which people have been very understanding about. Um, but all of those have come back with much, much larger orders, obviously, that we'll be fulfilling in the future. So we have anywhere from 600 to 1,000, depending on when things arrive. They're so easy. I mean, you, you pull them out of the box and plug them in, and you're ready to go. Uh, obviously, if you want to register people, you do that process. Um, but they are ready to scan for temperature uh, right out of the box. The next question is, how does the background behind a person standing in front of the unit affect the temperature reading? Uh, it really doesn't. Unless, so unless there is a very high heat source behind them and they're not blocking that with their head, um, it doesn't affect it. And Paul, I know you've done some testing with, with different things and our engineering team did and, you know, with tricking the sensor by having it close to a very hot light and moving your head away. Uh, but as long as your head is in the correct position, um, we don't see that as a problem. I don't know if you've seen anything else in the lab, Paul, of ways that you can trick the thermometer. No, it, it really requires that your face be detected by the uh, infrared camera first before the thermal temperature is read. So uh, those two things have to occur at the same time together before a reading is taken. So it, uh, it really depends on a, a face being there. Yeah, so you can't really hold up like a photo of someone, which I know in certain facial recognition software that we've seen, you can, but because this has to get the temperature as well, um, that doesn't work. And obviously the reverse is true. So 
facial recognition first, uh, temperature second, all in obviously fractions of a second. The next question is, does it include a keyboard since it is not a touch screen? It does. Yes, so, and that's another area that we're waiting on our shipment. We we're sending out actually, I think, HP keyboards and mice right now to plug in because um, we ran through the, the custom board. So there's a small kind of all-in-one keyboard that we'll be shipping with the devices. I'm sure any new orders will have those as they leave in the next kind of three to four weeks, but yes, it does. Are these ADA compliant? Uh, well, there's no, as there's no kind of interaction with the unit, the unit can scan uh, somebody in a wheelchair. Um, but uh, again, ADA compliance encompasses lots of things. So as far as scanning someone in a wheelchair, yes. Um, and obviously there's other things that would relate to ADA compliance of getting someone there. Uh, if it's a blind, obviously person, do they need some braille, some direction? Um, so currently from a height perspective, scanning perspective, yes, it does. The next question is, would you be able to share installation instructions so our integrators could see how it would connect to our various security systems? Yes, well, we have we have instructions available right now in its standalone form. Again, super easy to, to deploy. We've got some of our deployment partners um, that are providing these to their customers. And uh, I mean, it's it's minutes to set it up. Um, and then we do have some custom packaging, which actually we're now we're shipping on pallet with box right now. Um, but as we replenish our custom packaging, it is it, it can be shipped potentially shipped small package, and uh, and then the box just disposed of, so there wouldn't be a pallet, which is typically how our self service devices ship is a pallet and box. Um, so that will obviously uh, get expanded upon when manage comes into play, and we already have obviously existing. Um, instructions and guides on how to set up manage uh, which would obviously um, overlay onto this so all of that is available currently uh, for the standalone unit and will be available immediately once we have the uh, m0 manage turned on the next question is what is the rate of false alarms occurring uh, it's it's actually very low. I mean, we haven't seen, um, so we've had, I think, two or three alarms. We haven't had any false alarm where the alarm has gone off and then we've secondary tested and they've been under. Um, it's always been uh, over. So we haven't had that. We, you can, so in the mask mode, um, and just to be transparent, in the mask mode, so this does have a mask sensor. So if you register all your people, you would typically register them without a mask on. Um, for obvious reasons to get their whole facial profile, but it will recognize a person with a mask on. But we have seen some false positives, people with large amounts of people when wearing a mask. Uh, if they take the mask off, it goes back to a very, very high accuracy rate. Paul, I don't know if you know that what the number is, but I know it's very high. Um, but with the mask on, obviously you're hiding, you know, half or more of the face. Um, you will get some more, uh, I think Paul, in fact, didn't you get recognized as one of our assembly guys when wearing a mask at one point? Yeah, so that's correct. So the, the mask is just, it's just not possible. Uh, and we, we work with a lot of facial recognition companies. Um, most won't even attempt to do it with with somebody in a mask um, for obvious reasons, but um, it does, and it is surprisingly accurate. Um, but without a mask, extremely accurate. So if you do have the mask feature on. We would suggest that the facial recognition is done with the mask down. The system will remind them to put the mask on. They will put the mask on and walk through. And that's how we're doing it in our plant. And uh, we're getting 100% accuracy rate uh, day in, day out. The next question is, is this a full thermal imaging system or a one pixel pyroelectric sensor? That's a great question. Um, I, Paul, what is the spec on the thermal imager? Isn't it? Uh, it was a uh, thermal imager array, uh, a hydro, um, what do they call it? A thermal file sensor, 32 by 32. The, yeah, 32 by yeah. 32. The next question is, does Meridian offer installation and or integration services? Uh, yes and yes, we do. Um, Installation services, um, we use lots of third parties for. Um, we don't do them ourselves. 
So we work with uh, lots of the big guys out there doing installations of all of our units. Obviously, we, we ship thousands of units, um, indoor, outdoor, retail, um, ticketing, uh, you name it, we deploy it. So we can arrange that. Most of the, the resellers of the product or distributors of the product can do that as well. Um, but yes, we do. The next question is, is it CDC approved? Uh, no, no, it, it isn't. And I, I don't know what is going on with our conversation with FDA. We have a team leading all the certification processes here at Meridian. So any of the UL certs that we do, obviously we can badge certain devices UL um, ourselves here. We have a lot of clients that we build UL solutions for. Uh, but we would have to look into that because right now, I don't even know if that's something that we've looked into. The next question is, what is the cost of the calibration device and the cost of M0 Manage? Uh, M0 Manage Quantity 1 is a subscription, as we mentioned earlier, is um, $295 Quantity 1. Obviously, that scales down with volume. Uh, the calibration device, good question. I want to say it's around $495. Um, it's not a massive number, and obviously you only need one for many units or one per location if you want to do the calibration. Um, we haven't been selling a huge amount of those. Um, we did loan a few out early um, for people to validate and test with, um, but I want to say they're just under $500. And the that's, something that, that's something that people can source on their own. We're just kind of doing that as a value add. We're not there's no margin or anything on that was passing those through but they are available out there um, so you could really use any um, calibration device for a thermal sensor the next question is how many people or profiles can be stored for facial recognition 30,000 on the device as a standalone unit um, that is expandable if needed, we would do a custom build for that, but it's 30,000 currently. And then, Paul, once it's in the M0 Manage, I think it stays the same, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't increase it, but uh, it will allow you to propagate the database of up to 30,000 around uh, different devices in your facility. Yeah. And again, if, if someone needs more than that, that is a custom build that we can do. The next question is, can the standalone version be configured via a web interface? Not currently, no, but it, it will shortly. The next question is, are there card readers already integrated or do they need it to be added as a separate line item when ordering? Yes, yeah, so the, the contactless reader is a separate line item. All the devices have the space for it. Um, as opposed to us making two different styles, we just made one. Um, stand that it doesn't come with it. Uh, we do have clients that are ordering it with, and uh, that will be something. And Paul, we may be able to expand on that a little bit with some of the I.O. and add some different devices externally to the unit in the future as well. Um, but it is a separate line item, yes. The next question is, what is the chipset on the tablet? Uh, that was on the specs that we blew through, so I, I don't recall, Paula, if you know what the, it is. No, but I don't have it off, off hand, but it, it's... It's, some, it's on our site. Tips, it's on the specs um, on, our, on our website. ARM-based. Let's see. The next question is, can this be upgraded to Android Oreo 8.1 or newer? This is a, a custom build of Android, uh, so it, it's not going to be able to take a, a standard release of Android. So any updates of the OS would uh, come from Meridian, if, if ever. The next question is, do you have any additional security documentation? We do. And we have, so we have a document kind of around um, our M0 software in general. And uh, so that's available. Uh, upon request. Next question is, how does the ambient temperature affect the reading? Uh, we're really not seeing any effect, are we, Paul? I mean, we've, we've tested it in multiple um, environments. And, yeah, as long uh, as you're within the normal operating temperature, which is in the document, which is actually fairly generous, uh, there shouldn't be any discrepancies or anything in the reading. 
The next question is, what will be the cost of the countertop configuration? Um, it's less than the freestanding. I don't know how much less. I want to say maybe $150, $200, something like that. Um, that one's still not skewed up for the channel yet, um, but it will be less than the freestanding one, but I don't have the exact price. Next question is, what is the type of battery this unit will use? Uh, it's a lithium battery. That's all the information I have. Our engineering team is working with our supplier um, to, again, to get the, the battery built that will fit inside the unit and then obviously go through the UL testing. Um, there are external lithium battery packs uh, that could be used today. Um, in fact, we've, we've done that on a few deployments um, that give you similar uptime of 12 to 16 hours. And if someone wants details on that, we'd be happy to pass them along. Most of our uh, partners and resellers will have those available. Um, so there's a lot of lithium kind of battery backups, not like your traditional UPS, but the smaller battery arrays that you would have a laptop or a tablet to charge from can be used. <clears throat> Next question is, what is the Meridian backend software cloud platform? Paul, let you go with that one. Yeah, it's a it's a hosted service, software as a service, and uh, it's uh, a website that's available uh, to log into. Um, it's it's uh, developed by Meridian. We use uh, Java technologies uh, for that service. And then it looks like the last question is: Are the subscription prices for the software per month or per year? Uh, it can be either way, but typically it's an annual. Uh, so our normal day-to-day -day self-service devices, it's an annual fee. Uh, we do have some clients with larger deployments or, or their clients um, with monthly setups, but typically it's annual for us. And again, quantity one, um, it's 295 per unit per year. And again, that obviously comes down as you get more. And that looks like that is the last question. Um, and we're at the top, closing in on the top of the hour. So it's good timing. Excellent. About the same as yesterday. Well, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. A lot more information on the website. Um, everyone hopefully can take this extra 10, 12 minutes to catch up on stuff. I know we certainly can. We appreciate it. And we will be doing these at least twice a week for the foreseeable future. Um, I don't know, Melissa, if we're going to post these links on the website or, or how they get them, but um, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we email everyone uh, a follow-up. And uh, thanks again, and have a good evening. Thanks, Meridian team. Thank you all.